Get out. Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to an IS-8 replay, which is, uh, you know, we're already off to a bad start with that as far as I'm concerned, but this match is not really going to be that I had a good match, it's going to be because of another thing. One of the questions I get asked in the Q&D videos sometimes is, do I ever get really annoyed playing World of Tanks? Well, this is actually a replay, a, a, a match where I actually, yes, my jimmies were rustled and... It was for a number of reasons. It was the combination of I'd had several bad matches in a row, because hey, it's a weekend, and I'm playing a tank I don't especially like to get the daily. Um, in, in this case, it's because I want to get to the IS-7, and that means playing through the IS-8 first, and I could just grind a bunch of XP, convert it to free XP, and whatever, but I, I, I don't think I've ever really done that, and I don't ever plan on doing that, because that would involve basically buying a bunch of gold for just that purpose and that kind of feels like a waste of gold to me and also by deliberately playing tanks that I'm not comfortable in even if I know they're not particularly good tanks it hopefully so the theory goes I will become a better player along the way because I'll hopefully learn to compensate for their deficiencies somewhat so there's that as well and um, if there's a if there's a particular goal, I should add that caveat, if there's a particular goal where I'm, like with this grinding through to the IS-7, whereas for instance with the VK3002DB, I just plain gave up playing that because I didn't desperately want the Leo 1, I just couldn't hack it through that, so I just stopped mid-grind and that was that. So it's not like I do it to myself pointlessly. I go through these grinds if there is a point, but that's not really what this replay is to talk about either. So I've come up to this corner, there's only a couple of tier 10s on each side, but most notably our E100 is sitting next to the Jagdpanzer E100, because he's a sniper, you know. We've actually got a decent number of tanks here, and it doesn't look like we're facing that many tanks either. There's likely to be a tank destroyer or two further back in B6, that kind of area. And uh, there we go, I can see he's distracted by the T69, so I go bloop. Uh, but the thing is, if you get to that point, I mean, there's no artillery, but my support at the moment is looking quite healthy. There's the M103, a pair of IS-3s, and that T69 is, well, he's taking a bunch of damage, and I don't really want to go too far, because I know that there is, yep, there it is, there's a waffle, and this tank cannot take any punishment at all. It's a bit like some of the French tanks, you kind of trade hit points for for damage and you want to retain the hit points as long as possible. Also I'm trying to fight around this corner and this thing has got really horrifically bad gun depression. It's much like the IS-3 in that regard so by the time I've pulled forward you know they have to not be looking in my direction. I'm definitely taking a chance even with there just being the tank destroyer there. E100 I can hit his turret weak spot except I hit just a bit too high so I've probably knocked out his observation device but didn't do any actual damage. The M103, the IS-3s, I think they're being way too aggressive at this point. The T69 is dead already. We know the stuff back there and they're just being taken apart. So my support is kind of rapidly eroding at this point and I don't want to be aggressive because there's actually more tanks here than I thought. There's two of their tier 10s and like I said this thing cannot stand a beating at all. The E100, uh, in fact there's the STI there, the KB4, IS4. I could have pushed, but I would have just died, so it was pointless. And I knew it was pointless. And even coming here in the first place in an IS8 was a bit of a risk. Now look at the rest of the team on the map. We've basically got no support behind us. At this point it's just me and an IS3 and I think, okay, no, they're just going to rush. There's nothing behind us to stop them, absolutely nothing at all. So if I pull back, I'm probably still going to get rushed because I can't get back up the slope opposite, but it might buy a few more seconds, and sometimes a few more seconds translates as a bit more damage done. Now, there we go. Just most of my health gone already. Three hits. The number of times this tank bounces anything at all is... Uh, you can't make an enemy bounce on you. Occasionally they'll hit you at a, an auto-bounce angle, but it's not something you can ever plan for, and see that there, that went in my tracks. 
that wasn't a bounce, that was just sheer blind luck, and you do have to rely an awful lot on sheer blind luck when playing IS-8, especially when you've got no backup from your teammates. Now, at this point, look at what our Indian Panzer has just said. IS-8 noob. This is the point of this replay. This kind of... When you're sitting there, very comfortable at the back, sniping in your... Okay, soft, tier 8, medium, but... To single out another player and then just go lol noob, how is that even remotely... It adds nothing to anything that anybody's doing, quite apart from the fact that he is dead wrong, uh, although Caption Guy might not agree with that. Shh, Caption Guy. There we go, you want 100 down, but uh, yeah, our SDR is coming for me. But quite apart from the fact that he is palpably wrong, it's... The fact that he then decides that I'm the only person that's done anything wrong, regardless of the fact that we've got an Object 416 sniping, regardless of the fact that none of the tank destroyers were in a position to directly support. Yes, there was some fire from the side there, but only now are people moving. The, um, the E100 was sniping, but this guy just goes on and on, like I said, noob. And at this point, I should have just been like, nope. Don't say anything, don't reply, don't rice the bait. He's clearly, you know, talking out of his bottom, but no, I rice the bait, and yeah, that I shouldn't have. But like I've said, the, for a variety of reasons, quite apart from the fact that this guy was clearly talking utter nonsense, I'd had a bad couple of games, and after this game, I actually did take a break, because when you get into that stage, then you're starting to play, but I should just. Yeah, I should just not have engaged with this guy at all, and instead I just start waffling on in the chat because, like I said, my jimmies were Russell's, and they really didn't need to be. So, yeah, this guy kind of compounded matters, though. I mean, I should have just ignored him, and didn't. But the fact that he was just... I don't know. I don't know why he decided to fixate on me particularly. It's not like I was the worst player in this match by a long way. I was not in the best position in an IS-8, but it sure the hell, sure as hell beat trying to do what the uh, E-100 was doing, which was sit at the back and snipe. It sure as hell beat trying to push the other flank and try and get up that slope with no cover in a tank with no armour. And, yeah, I, I don't... Uh, watch and learn! Yeah, Ultra Lord 5850 what the hell are you talking about? Not only is he wrong, but he's full of himself as well, apparently? I don't know, but the point of this is not that somebody was just talking bizarre nonsense in a random battle, which is, you know, hardly news to anyone ever at all. It's more the fact that... Um, I just got annoyed, and I shouldn't have, and I could feel myself, you know, even as it was happening, I was sort of thinking, why am I letting this get to me? But it does get to you after you've had a string of, of bad battles, and it, it can happen to even the best of players, and especially when it feels like you're being unfairly picked on, when you know somebody's talking nonsense, and they just, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> so we're winning this one. I think in spite of um, our E100 and some of the other tanks, I didn't do especially brilliantly damage-wise. I did okay, I did more than my own hit points in damage, um, but I think this was one that we won more because of the enemy team being worse. Also, our Yagpans E100 did do a fairly decent amount of damage in this one as well. Although the KV4 is actually going to get the top score, because he got really lucky. He went down the slope and sat in what was actually a pretty silly position to be in for a KV-4, but managed it and actually walks away with, like I said, top score. Not because he does that much damage, but because he actually manages uh, uh, quite a bit of spotting damage. So, I don't know, maybe he's been watching my videos. Soviet Russian heavy... <laughs> Soviet Russian what? <laughs> Russian heavies make best scouts is what I was trying to say there. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, there's the last guy. He's down and match over. We've won. Let's take a quick look at the scores. So, like I said, that KV4 did pretty well. I was actually still fourth in terms of score. Um, some of the tank destroyers did okay. Our Lorraine did pretty damn well. 
Um, he actually wasn't playing terribly. Object 704, uh, nearly 5k damage. Yeah, Panzer E100, over 5k damage. Now, the, the Indian Panzer didn't actually do at all badly, and he's not a terrible player. I'll give him that. But you can be not a terrible player and still be totally unhelpful. And I'll admit, you know, uh, anyone that watches the stream know that me and Circle on Fosh will call people pancakes as much as anyone. But if we're calling people pancakes, it's we're calling it them for a reason, and we're usually going to expound on that reason. Whereas the Indian Panzer in this Ultra Lord just was like lol noob, and then no reason why, just throwing that out there for no apparent reason, making no sense whatsoever, and then following it up by hey, watch what I'm doing because I'm obviously so much better than 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 you at tanks. Um, yeah. Yeah, what? I don't know. I don't even know. But hey, this is World of Tanks. These things happen. So there you go. A match where I did actually get my Jimmy's rustled, and I shouldn't have. Hopefully, I will take away a lesson from this. Uh, at least I was sensible enough to go and take a break afterwards. Um, I should. I mean, really, I should play tanks like the IS3, um, not IS3, the IS8, uh, the 5120. Uh, I, I should stick to playing these tanks really just in a platoon, because if I know they're tanks I'm going to struggle with, then you can offset that by playing with, in a platoon, other players that you know are going to have your back, basically. Trusting to random teammates is often a struggle, as we all know. But, um, like I said, hopefully I will pick up some stuff along the way, and hopefully I will be a better player because of it. And hopefully I won't sit there in battles going lol noob for no apparent reason at other players who really don't deserve it. Because that doesn't make anyone's day any better. That just confuses and annoys people. So, uh, this wasn't a particularly entertaining match. But you can hit the like button even so. You can leave a comment below. You can subscribe to my channel. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.